Have you ever wondered how an oak tree stands tall for centuries while a mayfly will live its life in a matter of mere minutes? This is a question of life histories, a story of different animals' intricate and unique schemes used for survival, reproduction, and victories. From African elephants of the Serengeti to the inurans of small swamps, all animals display life history strategies in a different way. In our exploration, we'll uncover two core approaches to life history, the R and K strategies, without delay. Let's first understand what the terms R selected and K selected mean, and the routine and how they originate. Let's craft a traditional population dynamics graph, with population size on the y-axis and passage of time on the x-axis. When populations grow, you will get a plateau that looks like this, representing a change in population size that relies on time and considers density. On this graph, we designate R regions as the population growth seasons of a species, where populations are undergoing proliferation. Then there's K regions, or carrying capacity seasons of a species, when the population has reached its maximum occupation. The term K selected comes from the idea that these species, as time proceeds, living in stable environments will have population alignments that stay close to their carrying capacity, or K region of the graph. The term R selected comes from the idea that these organisms who live in unstable conditions will maintain populations' positions significantly below their carrying capacity. As time passes, their populations will have high bursts of growth that transverse to extreme declines, spending most of their life in the strife of a population growth phase or R region of the graph. To grasp what makes an ecosystem stable or unstable, let's glide into where the major differences abide between R and K selected species as we take a ride into the Atlas Mountains of North Africa. Let's look at each life history strategy side by side. A key characteristic of many K-selected species is quite plain to see, offering a large amount of parental investment, a strategy that is key. Having fewer offspring in order to provide more parental care is the plan. Quality over quantity is how organisms become a part of the K-selected clan. In the Atlas Mountains, where the Barbarian macaques climb, each mother with patience will take her time, giving birth to only one infant individually caring for the child continually until it has finally reached maturity. With this long developmental stage only reaching adulthood at four years of age, this trade-off will harvest a long lifespan for these monkeys, gauged at around two full decades. Thinking this way, we can understand the traits of a case-selected species we have at hand. With long lifespans and low reproductive rates being what they command, we will see larger body size and longer developmental rates in demand, along with these species reaching maturity slower, having high competitive abilities, and high species survivorship, just as these organisms have planned. Contrast this with ants, grasshoppers, annuals, and aphids, so small and fleet. As our selected species, they live fast, die young, but then the cycle repeats. They breed abundantly with no time to lose, offering no parental investment as their production of prodigy too large to care for ensues. This leads to low survivorship of young, it's true. With these species living in areas of high distress, they will push through. High reproductive rates allow them to colonize quickly and advance, prospering in unstable environments per chance. Thinking this way, we can again understand, this time, the traits of our selected species we have at hand. With shorter lifespans, smaller body sizes, and large reproductive litters to breed, our selected species will have faster developmental rates, reach maturity quicker, and have weaker competitive abilities indeed. So what's the key takeaway from all this we've seen? It's clear how our selected species can lead to population booms, serving as abundant prey for predators and high trophic levels to consume. While K-selected species often contribute to the stability and regulation of ecosystems without debate, they carefully orchestrate and regulate population sizes. The role in the food web is great. As one of these strategies become intertwined, both ecological schemes combine to define the structure of ecological food webs and all their design. Each organism has adopted its niche, you see, a strategy adopted for harmony. In this biological tapestry, all organisms have found ways to thrive and live in an ecological symphony.